Welcome back everyone to Data Science for Everyone. Today we're going to be looking at custom JS for selections with Bokeh. Let's get started. So first off, let's go on and get our standard imports going. So from uh, random, import random, because we're going to be using uh, some random data today. Let's also do from bokeh.layout, uh, we're going to import in here our row, row. And then from bokeh.layout, uh, models we want in here um, import our column uh, data source and we also want a uh, custom JS and then the last uh, but not least our other standards is uh, from bokeh plotting we're going to import in here figure and show show um, now, the one thing that we've been talking about um, a lot is, uh, again, custom, uh, custom JS, okay? And so a common scenario that we're going to want to specify uh, for this particular callback, okay, is to execute selection changes. So, for example, we want to select a section of uh, data, okay? So maybe we do some sort of... Um, uh, selection of some uh, random uh, scatter plot on one side and we want it to appear on the other. That's what we're going to be doing today. Um, now, it is a, a little bit more sophisticated than what we've been doing in the past, uh, but don't let that um, bug you too much. Uh, so let's go on and get some random data in here. So X, uh, let's do uh, random for X in range, uh, let's say a th thousand. Uh, and then let's go y is equal to random for y in range 1000. Um, and then let's, what else do we want in here? So we have our data. Now let's go on and uh, make our uh, column data. So here we want data and let's just give this a, diction, a dictionary of x is equal to x, y is equal to y. Um, then let's also go on and let's create up our first plot in here. So let's call this a P1 uh, figure. Let's do plot uh, width in here of 500. And then we'll do our plot height in here of 500. So we'll make it a nice little square. And then the only tool uh, that we want in here is um, let's pick a lasso selection. Uh, and then let's give it a title in here of, what would, what would we like to call this? Um, uh, we need to give, give the user some sort of kind of input for this, okay? So uh, um, make your selection. Okay, so again, this is this is going to be the original plot where we plot out our um, proper x and y uh, variables. Okay, um, so that's going to be our kind of our standard in there. Uh, so then let's do p1 dot uh, circle. Then we want x y uh, source is going to be in here our s1 and our alpha. Let's say zero point seven um, then let's do again we have our s2 in here uh, which is going to be our uh, column data source now the difference in this one okay is that our data is actually going to be just empty so x is going to be uh, empty y is going to be empty I and mean, you guys can't see that there we go um, so here you can see here that we have these, uh, just this basically this empty data frame in here, okay? Um, and so the purpose of that is that we're going to be populating that um, using our uh, custom uh, JS uh, script. So let's go on and do P1 or P2 here um, is equal to what? We want to make sure that it's going to be a figure. We want to do our plot width is 500, our plot height is 500. Um, now on this one, 
we do not want um, any uh, any tools of any sort because we're going to be populating it, okay? So let's make sure we have an X range in here of zero to one, a Y range in here from zero to one. Um, and again, as we said, our tools is going to be just empty. And then we want in a title that says, look over here. So then again, we want to kind of say, look, this is empty. Um, make sure that something's going to go on in there. Uh, P2 dot uh, circle. Uh, we're going to have X, Y, whoops, X and then Y. And then our source here is going to be S2. And our alpha is going to be, again, that 0 0.7. So this, uh, what we'll do here, let's actually, um, let's go in and make the layout. Okay, I'm gonna make the layout down here. And we'll do something like uh, layout is equal to in here, row of P1, P2. And actually, you know what, let's go in and show uh, the layout. And I'm gonna go in and run this. Um, and again, we don't have anything going right now, but we kinda just wanna see um, oh, whoops, and I misspelled lasso. There we go. So you can see here, this is this is actually our current plot, okay? Um, now, we haven't added any interactivity in here. We do have our lasso, okay? But now our goal is so if you highlight this little patch here, we want all of these values to appear over here. Okay, so that's 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 what we're going for. So we need to add in um, some sort of selection tool because here, whenever we select this, okay, this data actually in the S1 data set will actually have a um, a label to it called selected. Okay, so we're able to grab this data and we'll use the uh, JS on change to actually grab uh, grab some information. Let's go on and do that. So. We will put that, let's put that here and we'll call this um, uh, just callback. Okay, because what we're doing here is again a custom JS callback. So first s1.selected. Okay, and so that's that's actually telling us, all right, on those selected pieces, what, what do we want to do with that? So we're going to do js.onChange and we want to grab the indices. Um, then we want to do in here our custom, our custom JS. So here we'll take in um, the arguments in here for a dictionary of uh, S1 is equal to S1, S2 is equal to S2. Um, and then we want to also add in our code. So, and I'm going to actually um, put that here so that we can actually see that code is equal to and let me make this a multi-line comment so we can see this um, all right so now now we're going into the um, the JavaScript portion of this okay so var we're going to create a sum var variable for the indices okay and so then in order to uh, grab a hold of that we need the callback object okay uh, dot indices so that's that's we're getting that from this okay uh, then we want to create up uh, two different uh, uh, let's call them just data points for lack of a better term okay so s1 dot data then we want um, var d2 is equal to s2 dot data so we're actually grabbing those data points so then we have d2 uh, here of x is equal to, and again, we're, we're going, we want this to be an empty array. Um, and then we'll have also, um, we need d, d2.y, y, and here, and again, this is gonna be an empty array. So then we want to make sure and loop over everything, okay? And then, um, so the goal is to, for each, 
each of these items in D1, okay, we're going to push them into D2, and then we need to uh, have this change in emit, uh, emit, okay, because again, we want to push this data outside of our callback, our J Java, custom JavaScript, okay, because we're using the JavaScript in the background. So um, let me just put that in here, s2.change.emit, okay, and this is, this is, uh, this is actually important. Um, sorry, this, for those of you that don't know, these um, forward slashes in here are comments in JavaScript. Um, and so we'll say something like um, uh, push data to uh, Python, okay, for, for lack of a better uh, terminology for it. So let's go on and make our loop in here. And so for var i is equal to zero, uh, i is less than our indice, okay, that's this, dot length. Um, then we want i plus plus in here, and we do d2x uh, dot push, okay? And so for those of you that don't know JavaScript a whole lot, what we're doing with push is we're taking whatever variable or uh, element that we put in here, and we're putting it inside of um, this array element or this list object, okay? So those of you that do Python, this is a list. For those of us that uh, use JavaScript, this is an array. Um, so this is d1 x, okay, and then we need to actually index that, so indice i, uh, bracket, bracket, okay. So then I'm going to also just go on and, whoops, um, paste that, and let's change this to dy, d1 of y, indice of i, all right, so then this should, if, if I run this, we should be good here. So if everything ran correctly, whenever I make this, bam, we have in here a selection tool and we're able to grab those objects. So this is going to be handy if you want to inspect closer and maybe what would be nice, for example, is we could add in like a save function uh, for this uh, for over here. So maybe let's let's go on and add that save function. Um, so what's nice about having that extra save function here is that maybe you want to pass on um, uh, that sub selection to your boss or uh, to whoever you have. So let's um, let's rerun this. So now we have that save tool. So so here I have that selection. Oh, I want to send out that selection. I can save that. Okay and. Um, let me go on and open it real quick. So I think I called it bokeh plot. There you go. And now you can see here that it saved that um, sub selection here as a nice PNG file for us. So again, we can do um, a lot more um, sophisticated types of examples if we want to later on. But I'm hoping that this can kind of give you guys a sense of what you can do with uh, these JavaScript uh, callbacks and custom uh, callbacks for bokeh. If you like this, please comment, subscribe, hit that like button, and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.